So welcome to this call. This will be the last Zoom call that I do in 2023, last free Zoom call. Whether somebody invited you on here or you saw this on my social media, uh, just congratulations to you. Because when you look at crypto, and we're going to open up the chat box here, guys, in a couple minutes. I just want to get this thing off the ground because I'll I'll start engaging with the chat. Is you have to understand that in any industry, in any business, if you have a goal, if you have a dream, first people don't and will not understand. They will not understand why you do what you do. They will not understand uh, what you're doing it for. They'll call you a loser. They'll call it a scam. They'll say that you're never going to make it. And then when you start to have some success, then people want to attach themselves to you. And the same thing goes on in the crypto markets. Now, I found an article from about nine years ago this week, okay? Nine years ago in 2014, okay? I, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys were here in 2014. I wasn't. But in 2014, Bitcoin was a couple dollars. And there were events that took place that created what? They created fear in the market, okay? One of those events was an exchange called Mt. Gox. And the people that had their money in exchange in this exchange still haven't gotten their money back nine years later. So think of this like Coinbase. Think of you having your money in Coinbase or in Binance or in any centralized exchange, which we don't trust. And then tomorrow they go out of business and you never get your crypto back. Now, could you imagine that happening? When Bitcoin was at dollars, 10, 20, 50, hundred dollars, and you had thousands of them or hundreds of them, knowing what the price is today, how would you feel? Let, let me let me let, let me know in the chat how you would feel if that happened to you nine years ago. How would you feel? Would you be happy? Probably not. And that's why if you're new to crypto, we don't trust these exchanges. Now, in 2014, there was fearful events. People were going to jail. Silk Road was happening. You know, Neo, which is still around. Neo collapsed. Charlie Shrem. There's all these events. And the point of what I'm sharing with you here today is that every cycle in the financial market, every election year, there are cycles that take place. And actually, really quick, I need to do this really fast. Disclaimer. Everything in today's webinar is strictly educational, but if you get some results in the process, congratulations for showing up and paying attention. Okay, now back to the scheduled uh, programming here. Okay. So when you look at this, you know that there's a manipulated market. Every market's manipulated, and these markets were not designed for you to get rich, and these markets were not designed for you to make a ton of money, okay? Uh, who knows who this guy is? Let me know in the chat, right? Jamie Dimon, 2017, talking bad about it. 2019, okay, 2019, Bitcoin hit like 11, 12, 13,000, started to come back. And guess what people were saying? Okay, guess what people were saying? Same thing, right? Put a one in the chat if you know who Jamin Diamond is. It's the owner of JP Morgan, owner of Chase Bank. And guess what? First, they reject it, then they accept it. And I'm going, I'm going to go through this a little bit fast, okay? Because I want to get to some of the, the main stuff here, right? Forbes, you got to love this. Forbes 2018, take a look at this. Forbes article, the great cryptocurrency scam. Do you know how many people sold their crypto because of these articles? Okay, take a look at this. When I first wrote the great Bitcoin scam in December of 2017, Bitcoin was at 15K. Bitcoin is now trading at 4,300. Who would love to go back in time and buy some Bitcoin for 4,000? You would be up 10X on your money five years later. Who would want to do that? So the reason I'm bringing these articles up right now is because this will happen again. Whether Bitcoin goes to 200,000 and comes back, whether it goes from 40 back to 20 right now, these events, these articles, these narratives are going to show up, okay? But what happens after they reject something? They start to what? Somebody tell me in the chat. After they reject it, then they 
starts with an A. That was close, but but accept or adopt, you can use either one. You guys are both right, okay? And then you start to see things like this. Citadel, Fidelity, right? Fidelity is one of the biggest asset managers in the country. If you have a 401k, which is a retirement account in America, it's most likely with Fidelity, okay? And guess what? They recently, this summer, launched an exchange, okay? Now, I really want to show you guys something here. Because JP Morgan, last week, Jamie Dimon, who owns JP Morgan, was, I don't know if it was a court hearing or where he was, but he was still talking bad about crypto. When JP Morgan is now using Avalanche to tokenize their funds. Okay, now, JP Morgan has been working in crypto since 2014. And if you don't believe me, let's go over here to jpmorgan.com. Okay, take a look at this. This is on their website. It's a secure website here. They've been working, and I'm going to turn the chat off here because you guys are about to freak out. They've been working on their own blockchain since 2014. Now, I want you guys to understand something with this. This is a permissioned blockchain. This is not going to be decentralized. This is not what we want in the crypto space. But... At the same time, when you see major players, institutions, banks, whatever you want to call them, the elite class of people getting into the space, you need to watch. And this is why people are broke. They're watching the wrong people. You need to watch and to listen to who they're referring to, to what they're saying. I want to show you a clip of this video. Let me make sure you guys can hear it one second. Can everybody hear this video? Uh, let me play it. Through simultaneous exchange of assets for cash and even create new products. Yeah. For example, let me go to the part I want you to We hear. can use blockchain based technology to transfer assets platform. Please so listen. you can use scalable tokenization based solutions that meet your needs, integrate with legacy systems, and leverage a growing network of applications. With access to the JPM coin Pay attention system. Attention right here JP Morgan coin system that functions as an always-on source of value, enabling clearing and settlement around the clock. Helping you unlock the power of 24-7 commerce Watch and this. asset tokenization. Onyx Digital Assets is built on Consensus Quorum, a blockchain protocol we created for interoperability. Y'all seeing this? <laughs> Who, who's seeing this? Put a five in the chat if you're seeing this. Interoperability with Ethereum. Ethereum is in, is is involved, okay? They're they're involved in what what is going on when, with potential CBDCs in the future. Now, is, is this a bearish or a bullish event for Ethereum? Now, remember, Onyx has been around since 2014. I forgot the exact year uh, Ethereum came out, but I think it was very similar to that, okay? Um, I don't remember the exact year. I can't remember everything. I'm not a one of those mind readers, okay? So this is something to understand. Now, when you look at Ethereum, and I'm going to jump over here to CoinGecko. Yeah, 2015, right? Okay. You look at Ethereum, you look at Bitcoin, you look at Ethereum. Now, what, what was it? Uh, nine years ago today, Bitcoin was at a couple dollars. Ethereum, you know, I don't even know the price, but it was nothing. Okay. Ethereum's at 2,200. Bitcoin's at 42,000. Now, who was buying crypto earlier this year? Okay. Crypto's up. Bitcoin's up over 100% this year. Ethereum's up over, a, I think, over like 150% this year. All of these assets are going up right now. Now ask yourself, what was the story? What was the narrative? And what were people scared about that drove the markets lower earlier this year? It was a recession. It was, you know, FTX. It was all of these exchanges falling apart. All of that thing, all of those things happened and they got the average person out of crypto. You see, they don't want you in this space. They want, they want, more Bitcoin. That's why you're going to see all of these ETFs all get approved very soon, most likely. And if it, if it takes longer, it doesn't matter, but it's going to be a domino effect. And why I wanted to open up today's call, we're just getting started. So make sure you're paying attention. I wanted to open up this call with this whole storyline so you understand that 
the elite people that actually run the world, they're in this space. You are seeing everywhere BlackRock and all these banks, you know that they're here. So stop falling and stop listening to people and articles and Twitter. Twitter is a toxic place for crypto and NFTs. People would rather buy a coin that has $40,000 in volume than to buy than to have bought Solana at $10 when we were calling it out, right? 10, 15, $17. So you have to be careful. And I'm not even saying to listen to me. I'm just hopefully waking you up to the fact that you are realizing that these markets are controlled, they're manipulated, and they're not created for you to make money. Now, what has happened over the past couple of years, okay? I'm going to really start getting into some stuff here. What has happened over the past couple of years in America, right? We had COVID in 2020, the pandemic. The U.S. printed trillions of dollars. Inflation went up, right? Watch this. I need to open the chat up for this. Watch this. Tell me what country you're from and if things are going up or down in price where you live. Watch this, everybody. You can't make this up. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on here. Tell me what country and is it going up? Germany up, Israel up, Israel up, Ireland up, New Zealand up. Nobody is having a deflationary environment. Y'all see that, right? I'm not paying people to, to talk in the chat. Fuel fluctuates, but that's oil. That's, a, that's another conversation. And that's going to be affected through all this. Okay, amazing. Thank you guys for participating. Really appreciate you. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give away some crypto at the end here today because I'm feeling good. Okay. So one of the things that the Federal Reserve or Jerome Powell, you could say the government, but it's really not the government, has done is they've raised interest rates over the past, what, year, year and a half. And now they're out of point. Okay, I'm on a website here called cmegroup.com. This, this website's like pretty much accurate. It's pretty much almost spot on 100%. And I just want you guys to go down here to this bottom box, right? This shows us all the way to the right-hand side, the percentage of the next meeting that they're going to have in January, the percentage that is likely or not likely to raise interest rates. When interest rates go up, usually the value of this dollar goes up, okay? When interest rates tend to go down, you start to see the dollar lose some strength. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to correlate to the T. Interest rates can get cut, can pause, and the dollar can still go up. And Bitcoin and the dollar can both go down and both go up, or they can move differently. So the value of the dollar over the past couple of weeks, we've seen them start to pause rates. The past two meetings, they've paused rates. And Jerome Powell came out and said that next year they're not raising rates and they're looking to cut rates. Now you're like, Mike, I live in Sweden. I live in Germany. I live in Asia and I'm on this call. I'm not saying this because I'm American or I was born in America. My family's Cuban. I'm saying this because the dollar affects everybody in the world. And that's just how it is, right? It doesn't matter. It's not political. It's how it is. So in this category right here where it says ease, E-A-S-E, -E, that means to cut, right? To cut rates. There's an 11% chance right now that they cut rates in January. But start to look in the middle of next year where those numbers go up a lot. Somebody tell me what is going to happen when they cut rates in the middle of next year, what industries is that going to affect? It's going to affect houses because now people mentally are saying, you know what? I'm not going to buy a house because I'm going to pay 8% interest rate or 9%. And it's not necessarily, I'll say that in a second, car, car loans, anything where people are borrowing money. Okay. It's, it, it's, it's cheaper which is going to push the prices and the assets up. And I believe that is stocks. I believe that is crypto. And I believe you have a you have a ticker. I believe you have a time of the next six months to actually get serious about learning and studying and understanding this. I did not come from a financial background. I dropped out of college after like three, three semesters. I failed computer class. 
But what I became obsessed with about seven, seven months ago, and this is my opinion. Okay. What I became about obsessed with seven years ago is studying who actually runs the world and all this stuff. Okay. And when interest rates go up and when interest rates go down, it affects every single person's here and it affects your buying power and it affects your borrowing power. Okay. Put it two in the chat if you're with me here so far. And if you don't agree, get off the Zoom. It's that simple. So we look at we look at the meetings here. Now, what's happening in April? You see how there's no meeting here. What's happening in April? The Bitcoin halving, where the rewards go from six Bitcoin to three Bitcoin, about three Bitcoin. Um, and that's going to help what? Supply shock with crypto. So this is very important. Now, I, I want to go give you another free website here, equity clock, charts.equityclock.com. And this talks about the seasonality of the dollar. OK, here you can see over the past 20 years, the strength of the dollar. Now, this is something that we take a look at as traders or in macro investors to see over the past 20 years, what ha how has that asset normally performed? Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to go up or it's going to go down. But on average, what's the seasonality normally in the month of November going into December for the dollar. It's bearish, which means it's bearish, means it's going down normally. Now, when we look at the, now, when we looked at this chart, November 9th, okay, I sent this out to all my students, November 9th of this year, this is a trading view screenshot. I posted this in many places. November 9th of this year, we had saw the dollar was going up and the dollar gave us some signs that it wanted to drop. Okay. Okay. Look at this. Like you guys see this seasonality where, you know, pullback November going into December. I believe that we were kind of like in this level here. Market went up. Market went up. You can say it here, market drop, pulled back, market drop, pulled back, and then it started to fall. So I sent this out when the dollar was around this box. Okay. And if you're new here, don't worry. But we were looking for the dollar to go down, which means what? We were looking for positions in stocks. We were looking for positions in crypto as well. We had already been in positions all year. And that's exactly what has been playing out. We've been seeing this dollar start to fall to the downside. Now, where could this go? I mean, you have levels here. Let's delete this. You have a key level here. And you, and you guys can screenshot what I'm showing you and see if it happens. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm doing this call for free. So yeah, I'm not a fortune teller, but if I had to guess, I believe this would be a pretty key level here. And if I was a betting, a betting uh, man, which I guess we're all betting in something in life, I would say the dollar has the ability to come to some of these levels down here and take this liquidity or take this money. Now, if that happens, what could actually happen to other assets, stocks, crypto? Now, if you don't know, gold, right? Gold created an all-time high last week. Silver has gone up dramatically this year. Bitcoin is not at an all-time high, but it is up what? Hundred, hundred eighty percent. Okay, and uh, you know we've talked about forty-four to fifty-two thousand since back here earlier this year in March. So we're at a level here where Bitcoin, I believe, can now look to slow down and consolidate. What consolidate means it could go sideways. And there's there's a chart here that you always want to pay attention to. I'm going to delete everything here. And it's called the Bitcoin dominance. It's very simple. When the dominance of Bitcoin is going up, money is leaving these other coins or new money's coming in, but a lot of times it's altcoins are just going to consolidate, maybe drop a little bit, and money flows into Bitcoin. When the dominance is going down, here's what usually tends to happen. When the dominance goes down, some of these altcoins, other coins, start to move, start to rally. Now, we've seen the dominance of Bitcoin all year go up or down. 
this is the beginning of this year, right here, right? So we've seen Bitcoin dominance go up dramatically. And yes, when Bitcoin goes up, it usually pushes the whole market up as well. But if you want to find out just how altcoins are doing, there's a chart here. And this is free game. Like I said, you don't have to be here. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully you learn something. Hopefully you pay attention. This is on tradingview.com. This is the total market cap excluding Bitcoin and ETH. So here you take out Bitcoin's market cap, 800 billion and 200 billion. Okay, take those numbers out. And that is this chart. And we call the bottom of this bounce in the middle of this year, in the summer of this year, in many different areas, many different places. And the altcoins have started to run. Now, some people are so mad. They're so mad because they didn't buy Solana at under $20. Who else is mad that they didn't buy Solana under $20? Solana is a crypto, right? Anybody, anybody mad? And it's okay, okay? You, you shouldn't be mad, okay? That was a trick question. You shouldn't be mad, okay? Because there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do now. It's not at $20 anymore. And as these markets go up, as Bitcoin goes up, you will see these altcoins and mid-cap coins go up next. And then you'll see low cap coins go up next. Okay. So you shouldn't be mad. But what you should say is, why didn't I, if I was in crypto, if I was in crypto, why didn't I buy? Now, why didn't most people buy? Somebody tell me in the chat. Starts with an F, ends with an E. -er. They were scared. The uncertainty, the emotion of you not knowing if it was going to be around, costed you that position. That's okay. But when you, and, and guys, I feel that way time, at times. When, when the market was crashing and everything was going on last year, even I had fear. But guess what? I was not controlled by that fear because I had experienced that in 2017 and in 2019. So when you feel scared, guess what? Other people feel scared. It's called humans. It's called emotions. We're all the same. And that costed people a lot of, or costed people that position. Now, what are people saying? Watch this. What are people saying now as the market's going up? It doesn't have to be Solana. What are people now saying? If it only comes back to 50, if it only comes back to 40, if it only comes back to 30, then I'm going to buy. Who said that? If it only comes back down, then I'll buy. If it comes back to 60, then I'll buy some. And what does the market do? The market keeps going higher. Why? Because you're waiting for a number. You're attached to a number. And that's a dangerous place to be as an investor. Right now, I'm going to be honest with you. This could obviously come all the way back down here. Okay, I'm not going to give exact price points because this, this is already ran. This could obviously come back down. I'm personally looking for 130. For, for Solana. At 130, then I'll look to dollar cost average out of the market, just like I dollar cost averaged in down here. And I, and I had positions. I'm very transparent. I had bought uh, Solana at this level here, a big amount of Solana here. Market went up, market then fell. But guess what? I had, oh my God, I had like what's you, everybody here, you had hundreds of days to be DCAing to get that DCA price down. Now my DCA is under $25 for Sol, but I had a pretty bad entry maybe it was pretty bad entry somewhere here in like the 70s or 80s where i took a bad entry but i made up for it down here and that's okay okay dca in dca out now one of the things and while we're talking about solana then i'm going to answer some questions here from uh from some of you guys is i'm on a website here called defi llama.com well, actually let me take one step back in the bear market last year, one of the things that I wanted to do is create free tools and free resources that people could not know anything and learn, right? Uh, so in my free ebook, the DeFi ebook, in, in page three, if you're new to crypto, there are some things that you have to know when it comes to um, terminology. Okay, I'm going to turn the chat off here for a few minutes, guys. Terminology. 
right? So when you hear people say like the market cap, what is that? It's the current price of something times how many coins there are. What's the max supply? The max number of coins in a crypto. I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you some examples of some good, what we call tokenomics. Okay, tokenomics. You know, uh, I'm going to skip those two. Fully diluted valuation. That's the market cap times if the max supply was reached. This is why people lose so much money in crypto. The market cap is 100 million, but the fully diluted is like 15, 20, 50, 100 billion. And those are the coins that start with an S that people love to buy. They love to buy those coins. And that's why they keep losing money. Chasing projects that have no use. I mean, they have, they have nothing. They don't even, they don't even have a website. Okay. Number six in DeFi. Okay. This is what I want to show you guys in DeFi in 2021, there was something called DeFi summer, right? That's when like Uniswap and Aave and compound had crazy runs. And one of the reasons that that happened, I believe was because of the ability in crypto called a smart contract and things that you can do in that contract, like staking and lending, where you could, you know, you guys could actually lend your crypto and actually get paid on that. You know, you could actually uh, put your crypto in places and earn interest on your crypto. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what places here for legality, but there's tons of places you can do that. Now, you have to find the right places. And a lot of people lost a lot of money in the bear market when the market dropped. Because some of those uh, places that they were lending, or excuse me, they hit a liquidation price. And I'm going to show you exactly where you can find other people's liquidation prices to take advantage. Okay. So this is really, really key. Uh, somebody messaged me in the Q&A. How do we get access to this? It's just, it's free. Okay. It's it's free. The, there. It's defiebook.com. Uh, you'll get an email with this. Okay. But anyways, so when we go to DeFi Llama, okay, at the top of the bull market, there was about almost $200 billion in DeFi, okay? Right now, there's 51. And how these markets move, so Ethereum and Solana and Polygon, is that there's ecosystems under the main crypto, okay? So here's how I, I want you to think of it first. Think of this like an umbrella. You have Bitcoin number one. When Bitcoin goes up and consolidates, then money flows from Bitcoin into these other coins. Okay, step one. Step two is when ETH goes up, consolidates, Ethereum has an umbrella of ecosystem projects like Uniswap, like Aave, like Compound, anything that's built on the Ethereum network. Solana has the same thing. Now, I'm going to use this as an example one more time. And I'm only using this as an example because I think there's really good, wow, we just hit a billion today. Really good potential zones here. Now, if you were on my webinar I did three weeks ago, let me know in the chat. Because if you were there, we've already seen 100, 200% rally on Solana. And we saw it in a lot of the ecosystem projects. Okay. If you were on, I did a free Zoom call on, I put it publicly. I posted this Zoom call yesterday, 24 hours ago, and we had 550 people register. Zoom link only holds 500. So if you weren't there, it's okay. Thank you for participating. Let's go back to the call. Solana at the top had over $10 billion in it. $10 billion. In the bear market, when everything crashed, crashed, it went to $200 million. And now it's back at a billion. And these are the projects that are helping Solana's ecosystem run. This one was a free project, uh, a free airdrop project that was released uh, on December 7th, about a week ago. There's already $500 million in, the, in this project. It's still too early for me. That is kind of a little bit sketchy, I'm not going to lie, but pay attention to it. Some of the projects that have been around for a long time is something like Radium, Solend, and Orca. If you were 
here on that webinar, we talked about radium. And it's not because I talked about it. Okay, please understand that. I can't remember the exact day. I want to say it was here around 35 cents. I want to say it was it was around, it was mid-November, right? Maybe around this level here. And now radium, which is a decentralized exchange. So you have centralized and you have decentralized, right? Radium is one of the biggest for Solana. This is now up like, you know, 200% since that call. And when you look at it from this standpoint, okay, from a macro, you know why a lot of people look at lose at trading? Because they're looking at small time frames. They're like looking at the 15 minute time frame. I like to invest and enjoy my life and be able to travel and stuff, not stare at the chart all day. Sounds like I do, but I don't. 86 cents. I mean, radium was at like, you know what? 15, $16. And I'm not saying that it's going to go back there. I'm not telling you to buy anything on today's call. Okay. I'm not telling you to buy anything. But what I'm telling you is pay attention because when Solana goes up, the ecosystem goes up as well. Look at this. One month change. These are all up 70, 12, 100 in TVL, which means what? Money is going into the projects. And it's a good first sign for a healthy ecosystem. Uh, Solend, right? This was just a crazy one. Where's Solend at? I'm not even going to show it, but it was like at 40 cents and it went, you know, it went to like $2 this week. So the, that's the purpose. Same thing with Ethereum. When Ethereum starts to move sideways, right? Ethereum has $28 billion in the TVL. I mean, this thing peaked out at, I mean, over a hundred billion. That money goes from Ethereum into a lot of these other projects like Uniswap, like Aave, like Maker. We called out Maker at $600, Five six hundred dollars maker right now is at thirteen hundred. Now, why, Mike? Let's 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 go with what I just showed you in the ebook. Why did that happen with Maker? Somebody tell me in the chat. Why did that happen? Well, obviously, people are buying it. You guessed it. But what makes the price start to move really fast? Number one is you have a max supply of only a million tokens, so supply and demand. The second thing is you have TVL, $5.8 billion, and you have a market cap of a billion. So take a look at this. The money that's locked up in Maker is five times more than the market cap of the token. That's what you want to see. Okay, and, and Maker is a very, very big project in DeFi. Now, do you know that Maker actually hit a higher price than Ethereum? Who who did not know that? In 2021, Ethereum hit what? Four or $5,000? Maker hit $6,000. Did you know that there's a project that actually hit a higher price than Bitcoin? Did you know that? Well, Mike, what's the project? called urine finance now i am not telling anybody this is not on my radar anymore yeah urine finance hit ninety thousand dollars mike how why because there's only thirty six thousand tokens this is what we call tokenomics and this is what people on twitter and what other people don't teach because they don't understand just numbers i'm not even talking about the project I'm talking about supply and demand. And if there's more demand, price is going to go higher. Okay. I never liked Olympus. Olympus, I see the question in the chat. They were offering too much yield, too much interest, crashed. All of those projects that said, we're DeFi 2.0, we're going to give you 400% a year. All of them crashed and burned. Okay. Okay. Put it one in the chat if you're getting some value from this here so far today. And the reason that those projects fall fast, some of them go to zero, is because it's an it's not sustainable. Nothing is sustainable 
at a higher than four to six percent yield. That's why you see projects. We're really going to show you guys something here, like Ethereum that offer. Look, uh, whoops. Most places to stake ETH. So let's go to Lido stake. Let's go to Lido. This is the biggest platform where you can stake ETH. Okay. Look at what they're offering for um for for Ethereum. Let's go to stake now. It's 3.8%. Okay, it's 3.8%. Solana offers between 6 to 7%, and that's still a little aggressive. Cosmos offers 20%. I don't really know how, but you know, they they do in certain places, but where what world are we living in where people think that they're going to go this is an old project. I'm going to use them as an example because they need to be where people would go into projects like this back in the day and they would have four or 500% yield. So what happens when that, what happens if there's a project doing that run? Here's why money is going to flow in and it's going to flow just as fast out. Unless I'm real, man, I'm feeling generous here today. Unless they have something. So Aave, okay? Tell me in the chat if you like the tokenomics on Aave. Now Aave, let me explain what Aave is. Very simple. You know how you have to go to the bank to get out a loan? I'm, I'm gonna say something that's, I don't care. Do you guys think racism still exists? Yes or no in the chat? I would say, yeah, to an extent. Now, now, is it the same as back in the day? No. Okay. I don't think so. But do you feel, do you, could it, okay, better question. Could it still exist? Could it still exist? Of course, right? You don't know. So now I'm not saying, now get, let, listen to what I'm saying here. You go to the bank, the person doesn't like how you look. They make up some excuses. They have control if they're going to give you the loan. Yes or no, right? Simple. In, in DeFi and in crypto, there are projects like Aave, and I'm not telling you to do this. I'm teaching you something here. Hopefully you're listening. Projects like Aave, where you could create a wallet, connect your wallet. Guys, please keep the, you know, I was just asking a question. Let's keep it chill in the chat. Okay, I, lo I love the engagement, but let's chill. Projects like Aave, where you can connect your wallet. And in DeFi, you know why DeFi is cool? Nobody cares how you look. Nobody cares the color of your skin. I'm just keeping it real. Nobody cares what language you speak. Nobody cares what religion you 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 have. You can connect your wallet. Okay, Ava, you don't want to work here today for me. You can connect your wallet and immediately have access to borrowing and lending crypto. Put a one in the chat if you believe this is a lot cooler than the bank. Being able to connect your wallet and now guess what? You can see some of these borrow APYs right now are very high. You know why they're very high is there's not a lot of people. Well, actually, to, you could supply your crypto and, and get paid about 9%, but you could also borrow crypto. Here's one of the things I teach all my students. Go back to this website. I hope you're paying attention. DeFiLlama.com. And if you're new here, like I said, Hopefully you're just absorbing and realizing that this is, there's a lot, but there's information that you need to get. Okay. DeFiLlama.com, scroll down. There's a, there's a button here called liquidations. And what liquidations means, and this happens every day to people, they take a trade on leverage or they borrow crypto against their crypto, right? So I have a hundred grand. I take out a loan against that hundred grand. And if I lose that money, I lose the hundred grand. And that's what we call borrowing, borrowing, right? Okay. You can see here that the number one uh, wallet that's borrowing right now has about $84 million worth of ETH. And the liquidation price is at 2100 so if Ethereum goes to $2,100, okay, which it's very close to, okay, if Ethereum breaks this level right here, this wallet, this guy, we don't know who it is because it's crypto and it's because it's uh, it's in Aave, but this wallet right here 
You could actually see it. It's transparent. Okay. This person loses $89 million. <laughs> Unless he adds more, more Ethereum to his wallet. Isn't that kind of crazy? You can see transparency. Does your bank show you the investments that they make with your money? Some of you are like, I don't got no money. I don't got no money. So, well, well if you had some money, wouldn't you want to know what they're doing with it? It's your money. It's your job putting the money in the account and the banks are just taking advantage of you. That's why this is a space you can't afford not to pay attention to. Okay, hopefully, hopefully, I really woke you up there. So it, we're going to close this call out here in five ten minutes. I'm going to answer some questions, but market hits that 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 guy goes to zero. So liquidations, you can see this. This is just it's called on chain data for a lot of different cryptos. Um, the biggest place people borrow and lend in crypto and DeFi on ETH is on Ave and in Maker, and you can see here. Now, there's rewards to being a lender. There's rewards to being disciplined. And I don't think anybody should be borrowing against their crypto unless you know what you're doing. And to be honest, most people don't. Most people don't know what they're doing. Okay. So we're going to answer some questions, guys, using the Q&A feature of Zoom. So where it says chat Q&A at the top, click on Q&A and ask your question in there. Okay. I'm going to answer the questions in there. So it's a little bit easier, okay? But hopefully today you've learned something. Uh, I'm not making really price predictions right now. I, I do like, I will tell you this, I do like XRP at this level, okay? Definitely this zone right here between 55 and 60 cents. Now, don't ask me when I got an XRP because that's, you know, I'm still, I'm still hodling this thing for freaking seven years. The, the majority of the bag, of course. Uh, but I do like how XRP is playing out here. I do think we see a nice run on XRP here soon. Why? What makes you say that? Well, XRP versus Bitcoin, it's a chart most people don't look at. Holy snap. 100 questions already. Jesus. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to answer as many as I can in 10 minutes after I finish this point. XRP versus Bitcoin. A lot of people don't look at these charts. And that's why they get in so late. They get into XRP. They will get into XRP. Let's mark my word. They will get into XRP when it's above a dollar. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when it gets above a dollar, your friend is going to text you, it's time to buy XRP. And that might be a time to start to slowly get out of that. Okay. All right, we're going to try to answer. <laughs> There's like 130 questions. <laughs> oh, y'all are going crazy here today. Um, okay, I'm going to answer the questions in the chat. Um, okay. There's a lot here. Okay, I've been using Coinbase to store all my crypto. Can I ask for a decentralized wallet? Okay, great point. If you're crypto, I have OCD, so I need to like delete some tabs here because I'm I'm getting anxiety looking at this stuff. If your crypto is in any exchanges that you see on this screen or not on this screen, I want you today to get them off, okay? There are wallets, right? I'm not affiliated with no wallets. I'm not, it's not a paid promotion, okay? MetaMask is the biggest Ethereum wallet out there. There's other features. If you need something for Solana, which also does Ethereum now, Phantom Wallet, once again, not a paid promotion, this is what I use. Personally, these are the two wallets I use. But the safest place for your crypto is a ledger, ledger.com. Don't click on links. Make sure it's a secured website. Don't buy it on Amazon. Don't buy it on walmart.com. Don't buy it from your friend who promises they got your back. Ledger.com. What would be your top three crypto coins? You know, I don't know. You know, you have to say Bitcoin because Bitcoin is actually the most decentralized. Everything else is kind of speculation to be honest with you, XRP, I love XRP, but they work with banks, you know, but guess what? The banks are going to make the market go up. The banks are the ones that are going to push and pump some of these projects, um, you know? So I like XRP. I like Solana, not the biggest Cardano fan. Um, I think Filecoin has a lot of potential in the future. They have a lot of patents when it comes to file storage. Go Google 
One of the issues in the next five, 10 years is going to be data storage. Data, remember this, data storage. Watch that project. At what prices are you buying BTC again? I mean, I want to see low 20s. Uh, what is your ebook name? It's just... Guys, I'm answering the questions in the Q&A. The ebook is just, let me just, it's just defiebook.com. I'm not really trying to. Defiebook.com. Okay. Defiebook.com. Simple. Uh, what do you say to Kava? I like Kava. Can you go through Fetch? You called it out on your last Zoom. Yeah, I did. I did call out Fetch. There was, I, I didn't call out a lot of projects on my last Zoom, but Fetch was one I did. And Fetch is running right now. Fetch is an AI project. We don't got time to get into all the bells and whistles of what these things do because we'll be here all day. Uh, but Fetch is at what? 69 cents. I can't remember the price. I think it was in the 50s. Uh, let me see if we can pull this up on the chart. Uh, do you think 32K retest before halving? I think so. I think Bitcoin can get back into the 30s. Uh, wow. Yeah, Fetch was... No, it had to be like right here. Fetch definitely has doubled since that last call. It's cool. What are your favorite NFT marketplaces? Don't ask me my opinion on NFTs right now. Um, not really a fan of a lot of NFT projects. You know, obviously I have Yuga Lab assets, but I hate OpenSea. I think looks rare and Magic Eden have potential, but it's so much speculation. Have you heard of Bonk? No, uh, yeah, I have. It, 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 I've heard of meme coins, you know, almost all the meme coins. I don't promote them. I don't I don't promote anything. Um, it's built on Solana, so that's cool. There's no thoughts on it. What would you say the opportunity is in more in mid caps or main caps? Well, great question, um, Roya. When you see main cap projects run, that money is going to go down, right? That money is going to trickle into some of these other alts. So, you know, I think some of the biggest opportunity now are projects that are lagging, like Uniswap. Uh, Chainlink has already tripled this year, so... Do I think Chainlink's going to go to $25, $25 soon? Yeah. But it's still tripled this year. So there's, you know, that risk. There's a lot of excitement about Cosmos right now. Injective, I mean, this, this project has just decided to leave the market without us. This thing was at $2 when we called it out on one of my sessions, like, last year. This thing was at a dollar last summer. Now it's at all-time high. All-time high today. All-time high. If you don't believe in crypto, let me tell you two things. One, crypto has outperformed your 401ks, mutual funds. It's performed every financial market in the past 10 years. There's nothing you can say about that. I know the financial gurus are on here, the financial accountants. No disrespect. I appreciate what you do for people. But there's no, there's nothing you can tell me or tell anybody that crypto is not a place to be. Well, Mike, it's not a place to be. Well, why is your bank and why are the people that you work for buying crypto, buying assets? I don't know. Uh, what crypto did you make your first money in? That's a good question. So I bought Litecoin and I bought Ripple in March of 2017. I bought Litecoin because they said it was faster than Bitcoin because it's a fork. And I bought uh, I bought Ripple because they said they work with banks. So those those two. Uh, okay, guys, last couple of questions. There's like, oh my God, there's like 150 more. Um, these are great questions. There's a lot of questions. Oh man, this is crazy. Do you think the market is going to have a pullback before the SEC? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do think there will be a pullback. And I've said this on this entire year, my entire bias this entire year has been that we get to 44 to 48K. We slow down and definitely, you know, uh, I, I do believe we will see some of these levels. I know this is a huge zone. I hate when people do that, but I do think we will see 32 and maybe even if the market gives us some fear, come down here and sweep 25K again. But once again, it comes back to what I said when the call started, people are expecting or people are waiting and waiting and waiting. And what does the market just do? It'll just chop, slowly chop up. And then when least expected, It'll give us that push down, not that low, but you get what I'm saying. It'll make that move to the downside. Okay, next year is an election year. 
you know, they start cutting interest rates. Everybody thinks the market's going to go to the moon and then something happens. Events happen. Okay. Uh, uh, where do you, Olivia, just message me in Instagram for that question. What do you think about ledger hacking? Yeah, it's obviously serious. They did fix the problem. Hopefully you guys, nothing happened to your um, coins, but it, it actually happened to MetaMask too. And MetaMask had to fix it as well. Uh, I don't use a treasure. I have many, many ledgers. Guys, there's so many questions. What do you think about Helium? Solid project. They just moved to Solana. I wonder why. Uh, how do I invest in XRP? Go to an exchange, look to get it. What do you think about Matic? I'm very bullish, guys, on all of these. Okay. Now, these are not entries, but I'm very bullish on layer twos for ETH because if ETH actually does the next upgrade, keyword if, and if it works, then a lot of these projects should go should go up, right? But Immutable X is already, what, tripled this year or quadrupled? Polygon, I think, still has a lot of room to run. Arbitrum, I think the price, I think this is going to have a nice spike up. But the problem with me is that there's too many tokens. And I think this is going to get, look at the dilution. Here's an example of a bad tokenomics project. 1 billion market cap, 11 billion fully diluted. Now, this these tokens are going to come into the game through time, of course, but I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, opinion about Binance. They got caught. Uh, William just messaged me, uh, heard of Venom. Nope. Thoughts on HBAR? I called out HBAR at four and a half cents. Um, yeah. Sushi, I'm allergic. Um, no, nah, I am allergic, but sushi swap, it's gonna have the whole narrative of decentralized exchanges. I think sushi swap will be will be good. Um, what's your Instagram? I'm gonna put it in the chat because there may be fake people here that will try to message you. It's just DeFi Mike Sotero. There's no underscores, and I'll never ask you when you follow me. If you do, I don't care. It's up to you. There will be fake accounts that will message you. Don't send them crypto. Okay. What do you think about LimeWire? That's a funny question. Exit strategy. Okay. Last last question I'm going to answer here because this is the last Zoom I'm doing for this year. I'm working on a ton of projects, a ton of businesses, and uh, I will not be doing any more Zoom calls, but I hope this has been helping you. Okay. Last thing I'm going to share with you here today. Does everybody have five more minutes? Put a five in the chat if you have five more minutes. I'm going over time, but that's it's okay. Okay. Exits. That's what people want to know. A lot of people in the chat, a lot of the questions you guys are asking about exits. Okay. What is your plan? Okay. Here's what I'll tell you is you should never enter without knowing the exit. I was walking into Publix. Okay. I live in Florida and there's a store called Publix. And they built a Publix near my gym and I'm walking into Publix. And it's so funny because I think, I guess I think like a trader or whatever. And I'm walking into the store and I look up and it says, I just realized this. I've been going to this Publix for like a year. It says entry. And then I look to the left. And what do you think the other side says? Exit. And the problem that people make in life in investing and in trading is they take the entry, but they don't know where their exit is. Imagine walking into the store, going into the store, and then getting lost. That's what people do. That's what people do every day. They walk into investing. They walk into the store, and they get lost. They get stuck. They, they, they have to ask somebody where the exit is. Don't be that person or don't enter in the first place. So don't enter. Don't take an entry. Don't forget that analogy. Don't take an entry without knowing your exit. So for example... Solana, I'm going to tell you my exits, okay? Uh, we took the Solana positions, right? Whatever price they were. I have a 130 exit and I have a 220 exit. I'll probably exit though at around 95, 130 and 220. I already know this. So let's say I have a dollar, okay? I'm going to give this example to you at a dollar. Let's say I have a dollar in my portfolio or 100%, okay? Simple. I'm going to sell 
a specific percentage here, a specific percentage here, and a specific percentage here. Now, let's say I sell at these three points. And if Solana goes to $500, what do I do? Somebody tell me in the chat. Somebody tell me in the chat what I do. I had an entry. I set a goal for myself. I have no more Solana. I sold all my Solana at $220. I do nothing. Great job. I move on. I look for the next opportunity. I just did 5, 10, 15x. Why am I so damn greedy? But here's what people will do. Hopefully not you. Is you know what they'll say? Watch this. You know what they're going to say, guys? Oh, I just I just messed that up. They're going to say, okay, Solana is at 500 now. It's at 500. Imagine this was $500 Solana. When it pulls back, I'm going to get in. This is what happens. Okay, listen, please. Now it's at $400. And now I made all this money. I'm up. I'm up thousands. I'm up racks. Here's what they do. Now they take an entry at $400. Guys, this is what happens. The market goes up. And now they're living life, living La Vida Loca. They're, they're, they're chilling. They're booking their next cruise. They're booking a flight to Paris. They're going to Africa to ride elephants. And then the market does this. And now they're on the flight to Africa. And now they got to get a refund when they land. And now you know what they do? They start buying more. They start dollar cost averaging. They start listening to people on YouTube and they start buying this dip and they buy more. And then you know what the market does? And that's when they get out. Welcome to crypto. I just explained crypto in literally 30 seconds to everybody here. Okay. So how do we avoid that? We avoid that by never taking an entry without knowing an exit. Okay. Let me give you, I'm going to give you an example one more time on this chart on a different project. Uh, let's use Alluvium as an example. This is a gaming project. I actually like this level here. Okay. Get, oh wow. What what do you what do you believe? I'm not, I didn't I didn't draw this right here. It's on the chart because I know my when I'm getting out. There you go. Free game right here for this project. Okay. And, I, and I'm not telling you to buy this, but I guess what? I have close my initial, exit 75%, close remaining remainder of entries. I'm not telling you shit that I don't do. And, and I'll even post when I do it, okay? Because I know how people are. We live in a posting world, which is very, very, uh, very, very dangerous world to, to buy into those beliefs. So guys, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to give away some crypto. I'm actually going to give away some alluvium. I'm going to give away one alluvium, which is at $95 right now. Maybe I'll give away two. To anybody who gets my free, okay, F-R-E-E, -E, it's free, okay? So there's, I'm not selling anything here. If you don't have this book and you're new, DeFi ebook, get the book, take a screenshot that you got the book and tag me on Instagram. And I'm going to send, I'm going to pick a winner tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, 24 hours later, and I'm going to send you one alluvium, okay? If you have the book, tell somebody to do it and they can they can they can win a chance for the book. Okay. I hope this has been helpful. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of financial markets going up right now. You know, you look at stocks, you look at Coinbase. I mean, guys, if you were on the when, when did was the webinar again? I think Coinbase was like right here. Coinbase was approaching this level before that call. We're seeing stocks look to create all-time highs. We're seeing assets. Literally squares running. Uh, and we're gonna see we're gonna see a lot of events take place next year. Okay. Uh, if I can leave you with anything here today, is don't get caught over leveraging your portfolios. Don't get caught chasing the market, right? In 2017. Uh, 20 in 2019, I used to like, just buy every time it would go up and it never worked. Okay. It, it never worked. You know why it didn't work is because every little push up, the market would just fall and then I would get in again and it would fall. So wait for max fear 
and then spend your time dollar cost averaging through time. Okay. Don't try to just rush right in with all your capital. And that's how you get burned. That's how you lose a lot of money. Okay. Um, somebody just asked the question in the chat. Yes. You, you get the book, you tag me. There's one Instagram account. There's no underscores and you'll be, I'll be looking at those DMS tomorrow and we will pick a winner. You'll send me your Ethereum address. I will post it that I sent you the crypto. Uh, it doesn't have to be a post. It's on your story. It's on your story that you got the book. DeFi ebook, last time I'm sending this, and we'll pick a winner. Okay, guys, have a great rest of your night. Have a great rest of your December. Uh, for those that are celebrating holidays, be safe. Don't do anything crazy. And uh, maybe we'll do one of these in January. So be on the lookout. Much love. God bless. See ya.